All right, let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Luke, Luke chapter uh, 17. Luke 17. We're reading verses 12 through 19. So I'll read the even numbered verses on my own, and you join me on the odd numbered verses, please. Chapter 17, 12 through 19. Here we go. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There hath not found uh, that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith made thee whole. And now let's pray. Father, I pray that you'd help us to grab our attention and focus it on the word of God, the things of God. Help us to get what you intended for us <clears throat> by coming here today. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. Oh, what glory awaits me in heaven's bright city when I get there, such sights I'll behold. A million scenes of rare beauty will demand that I view them, but Jesus will outshine them all. Mansions will glisten on the hills of glory, happy reunions on streets of gold, angel choirs singing glad praises forever, but Jesus will outshine them all. The sparkling river is flowing, happy faces all glowing, land of splendor where night never falls. The golden glass gives reflection to the city's perfection. Still Jesus will outshine them all. Mansions will glisten on the hills of glory. On streets of gold, angel choirs singing glad praises forever, but Jesus will outshine them all. Thank you, Brother Gibbons. All right, you got your Bibles open to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. I was sitting down this week, and as I often do, and you've heard me say this before, uh, Tuesdays I usually spend with Bible study for Wednesday evening, and then of course Thursday and Friday is spent preparing for Sunday morning and Sunday evening's messages as I have my schedule and the way I've done things since I got here. And 
You know, often I'll, at the very beginning of the week, especially Tuesday morning, as I, I'm done with my devotions, I'll ask God, Lord, what is it that you want me to speak about this week? Lord, what is it that you're laying on my heart that would be a help to those that are here at our church that come to our services throughout the week? And uh, this week, with it just being the thought of Thanksgiving coming, and, you know, I just couldn't get away from this, this topic of thankfulness. I, I hit on it a little bit in chapel on Thursday morning when we had our chapel service for our, our students. And, and I told them, I go, hey, I'm going to be speaking about this. I had a hard time. Actually, what happened this week, and this doesn't normally happen, I sat down to do our chapel message for Thursday and wrote this sermon. And I looked at it and said, well, this is much too long for a chapel message. I go, let's, let's see here, one, two, three pages, almost four pages of notes. I'm like, yeah, that's a little bit much for a chapel message that should only be 15 minutes long. You know, so I was like, well, I guess, I guess God, you're wanting me to preach this on Sunday. You know, so I went a different direction with the chapel message, but I want to take this this morning, and the message is, is the title of it is An Attitude of Gratitude. An Attitude of Gratitude. You know, we often talk about Thanksgiving coming up. You know, and, and of course, this time of the year, especially for Christians, it's a day that we celebrate with family, just like everyone else that isn't a Christian. But it's also a day that we thank God for the things that he's done for us. But usually, you know, after Thanksgiving is over with, you know, we don't have a tendency to have the habit of thanking God throughout the rest of the year for the things that he's done for us. You know, what the world has done is, hey, we got Thanksgiving Day. It's a day to be thankful. And then immediately after Thanksgiving is over, what happens? It's a day to throw your neighbor under the bus for a TV. You know, Black Friday. You know, it's, uh, you know I look at that and it's, it's really not. It's the mentality of, oh, well, I'm thankful yet. You know, I, you know, I got, you know, that's mine. And it's, it's just completely the exact opposite. And that's not how God wants us to be. He wants us to develop an attitude of gratitude in our lives. And I chose this passage for a very specific reason. You know, God laid this on my heart. And as I was, uh, you know, looking at preparing the message, God says, hey, I want you to take, go to Luke 17 and, and use the story of the lepers. You know, we have this story here. Uh, you know, uh, Jesus enters into a certain village and, and 10 men, 10 men met him there that were lepers. You know, and you have to understand, leprosy has been pretty much stamped out in the world. You know, we don't hear a whole lot about leprosy anymore unless it's in a, a country that, you know, doesn't have the access to medical means that we have here today in America. And it's very rare. I don't think I've heard, ever heard of very many cases in America of leprosy. You know, we've got cures for it or means to take care of it now. But back during Bible times, there was no cure. You know, actually, a lot of the times, you know, the, the, the people during that day and age looked at it as almost a, a judgment of God on an individual that got leprosy. But also, the only way to get rid of it was by an act of God. You know, when, when somebody was healed of it, they look and say, hey, that was God's act of mercy on that individual to take it away. And, of course, these ten individuals hearing of Jesus, seeing Jesus coming into town, they're looking at him, they said, hey, you know, this guy is a healer. You know, he's healed all manner of sicknesses. And, you know what, we need the help as well. And we see that they stood afar off. You know, they weren't allowed to get near individuals that weren't, you know, uh, uh, leprous. They had to be away from the people that were healthy. You know, they were out, out on the outskirts of the city, if you will. And they call out to them. It says in verse 13, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And in verse uh, uh, 15 or 14, it, the, the Bible says, When Jesus saw them, when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass as they went that they were cleansed. You know, one of the things I, I, and this is just free on the side, that I find ironic is that Jesus Christ in a later passage says that he came to add to the law, not do away, do away with it. You know, this deals with Jewish culture. In order for someone to actually be reintroduced into society that was cured of leprosy, they had to go show themselves to the priest. Jesus didn't say, oh, you're healed, go back into society. He says, no, go show yourselves to the priests. And along the way, their leprosy was dealt with. You know, he still followed the Jewish customs that were there. You know, the Jewish law that was set in place. That's just free on the side. You know, in verse 15, it says, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God and fell down his face at me, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. You know, so he was on his way to the priest and realized... My leprosy's gone. And he turned back and went back to the Savior and thanked him, fell at his feet. You know, one of the saddest things I find about this passage is, is the phrase, and even Jesus Christ himself says, where, where are the nine? Where are the nine? 
You know, I've heard messages preached on it with that same exact title, Where Are the Nine? You know, where are the nine that, you know, had that same exact miracle happen in their life that didn't even bother to turn back? You know, I, I, along these lines, um, you know, we, we, say, we sang that song this, uh, this morning, I Must Tell Jesus. You know, I find all too often we, we want to tell Jesus all of our troubles, all of our trials, ask him for help, but we never go tell Jesus thanks afterwards. We, oh, Lord, thank you. you know, I, t- I need this to take care of my life. And then we just treat him like a genie. You know, hey, it's done. Never say thank you. You know, I wrote that I was writing this down so as a reminder myself, you know, it's not that we should just tell Jesus about our, our troubles for help, but we should tell him our thanks for everything that he does do for us. All those things that he takes care of. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, the Bible says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. God wants us to have an attitude of gratitude. You know, so I, I want to give you a little bit of a definition of what gratitude is and a few more thoughts when in regards to the start of this. And then I'm going to give you the four W's of gratitude this morning. So if you like taking notes, I like to use alliteration. It makes it easy for me to, under, to remember my points. You know, and it keeps it easy for the people to remember what is taught. Uh, so the four W's of gratitude is what I'm going to give you today. But what, it, what is gratitude? What does the word gratitude mean? It's an emotion of the heart excited by a favor or benefit received, a sentiment of kindness or goodwill towards a benefactor, thankfulness. You know, that's what gratitude is, being thankful, an attitude of thankfulness. You know, that is the one thing that we're missing. One of the, one, one of the things we're missing from our society is this attitude of thankfulness. It's the instant gratification generation that I'm a part of. I want it now. I don't care by what means. And there is no thankfulness. None whatsoever. You know, we need to get back to teaching good morals in our homes of saying please and thank you. And, and, and really pushing our children to say thank you and mean it. Not just, oh, okay, thank you. You know, and we'll talk about a little bit of that about today. I want to, don't want to get ahead of myself. You know, but this leads me to ask you this question this morning. Have we thanked God lately and from our heart actually meant it? It's not just saying thanks, a programmed response. But it's a heart issue of actually being thankful, sincerely thankful for what God has done. And we see it in our children. I say this for reason because we see it in our children. Well, you know, uh, you know, a child will say, well, thank you. But you, you can tell by their voice, their tone, their body language that they really don't. They're really not. They're just saying it to appease their parents for the fact of, oh, I want you to say thank you after something. You know, did you thank so-and-so for the gift they gave you? Well, thank you. You know, it's just like. Okay, that is not what I know. You want your child to feel that gratitude. But it's not just our children. It's us, folks, as believers, of showing that towards God. Really, when you thank God, do you really mean it? And that's the thought I want to go off after this morning when it comes to the rest of the message. A.W. Tozer said this, Gratitude is an offering precious in the sight of God and is one that the poorest of us can make and, not, and be not poor, but richer for having made it. You know, an attitude of thankfulness towards God, the, you know, it's, it's one that the poorest of individuals can make and not end up being any poorer, but actually be, become richer because of it. You know, God blesses those that are thankful, those that show that gratitude towards him. So let me give you this morning the four W's of gratitude or, or why I should be, uh, uh, have this attitude of gratitude. So number one, number one, I'm going to give you the point and then I've got a couple different things under each point that I'm going to give you. I guess you'd say the sub points, you know, that are four here. Uh, but number one, where should I show or give gratitude? You know, where should I show or give gratitude? So this message this morning is more or less going to be more of a teaching uh, message more than anything else. I want to teach you some things about gratitude this morning. So where should I show or gr- give gratitude? Turn to 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22, we're going to look at one verse here, verse number 50. So where should I show or give gratitude? You know, I thought about this when it comes to our children. Uh, Mr. Alexander, I'm going to use the, the cordless. You know, I, I thought about this when it came to our children. You know, we often will tell our, our children, when someone gives you a gift, what are you supposed to say? Well, thank you. You know, when you want something, you know, uh, and you ask for it, what are you supposed to use after you ask for it? Please. 
You know, teach them, please, that they have good manners. You know, I love, Mrs. Gallo, that you teach this in, in, in our K4, K5, because my son is, is so quick to correct his parents on this. You know, I love it because he sits there. I'm like, you know what? I completely forgot about that. So even your children can teach you. You know, he's sitting there, and he goes, you know, good manners is not putting your elbows on the table. You know, a good man, and I go, Where, who taught you that? He goes, well, I'm learning it in school. I go, well, that's great. I go, your Mrs. Gallo's teaching you that in school? And I, he goes, yeah, we're learning that. And he goes, it's not good manners to burp at the table either. You know, and I'm like, well, you're right. It's not good manners to, to burp at the table. All these little things that your children learn. You know, so even as adults, when it comes to thankfulness towards God, we need to get some teaching on it. How, you know, where should I show uh, or give gratitude? You know, so number, a letter A under this, if you want to put it on your notes, is this. Number one, letter A, where, where should I show or give thanks or gratitude, give gratitude? Letter A, give thanks to God around unbelievers. Give thanks to God around unbelievers. Second Samuel chapter 22 and verse number 50. Therefore... I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. That word heathen is just another name for someone who doesn't believe in God. Someone that's following a false god or someone who's atheist, if you will, in their mindset. They don't believe in God at all. You know, and God tells us in this, in this chapter of 2 Samuel, chapter 22, and verse 50, that he wants us to give thanks. The principle being taught here is to give thanks to God among anybody who's an unbeliever. You know, I catch myself all too often, you know, and I'll, I'll kind of, at the same time, I, I walk away and think, man, I can't believe I just said that. Because I've programmed myself to be this way, you know, we'll go through the checkout at, at uh, Shaw's or Walmart and, you know, I'll try to start a conversation with the, the checkout clerk or the bag person. That's I say bag person because it's not always a bag boy anymore. You know, I, you know, you have to be politically correct in our society. It's no longer a male man or a male woman. It's a male person. You know, so I, it's the bag person that's there, uh, you know, just so I don't confuse, you know, what, what's going on there. Uh, but, hey, the bag, the individual's bag, and I'll start talking to him and say, hey, I don't know, how's your day going? Just try to get a conversation started with them and, you know, or whatever I can do to start up a conversation. And, you know, most of the time when I ask them, hey, how's your day doing? I say, oh, man, it's great. You know, I'll catch myself. Immediate responses. Well, praise God. That's that's awesome. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, I'm not in church right now. You know, should I be saying that? And I get all kinds of funny looks by that. You know, some people will smile, and you know, some people will you know appreciate that. And others will look at you like, what in the world? You know, <laughs> they want to probably want to ask me, what are you smoking? You know, it's probably what they want to ask me. You know, and I'm like, I know, you know, I'm just high on Jesus. That's what it is. You know, but uh, you know, being thankful wherever you go. You know, give thanks to God around unbelievers. You know, praise God. You know, they'll ask you. You know, uh, you know, how how's your day going? You know, God's been good. My day is going great. You know, I don't be afraid to praise God around individuals that don't believe. Hey, folks. You know, I've had individuals tell me, don't talk about God, don't, you know, don't talk about church around this individual, whatever the case may be. I'm sorry, it's just part of my makeup. I can't, I can't, you know, it's like trying to tell someone not to breathe. You know, I don't breathe. You know, my dad would say that on occasion. You know, stop breathing. Well, if I stop breathing, then I'm going to, I'm going to die. You know? <laughs> what he really was saying is, you know, I'll be quiet. You know, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, I, you know, it's, it's like trying not to breathe, folks, when it becomes a part of you, that thankfulness. God wants you to praise him no matter where you're at, no matter who you're around. He'd say, the Bible talks about that. Well, let me give you another verse in regards to that. Psalms chapter 18, verse 49. Don't turn there, but there's another verse that goes along with this. Therefore, will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, again, among the heathen and sing praises unto thy name. Completely different passage. This is a psalm now. You know, we've got 2 Samuel, uh, you know, that's there that's talking about this. And now Psalms, chapter 18, verse 49. You know, don't be afraid to praise God around people that don't believe in God. You know, what is it going to hurt? It ain't going to hurt nothing. You know, other than the fact it's going to be more of a benefit to you giving praise to your creator, to your God. No, so letter A, under where should I show or give gratitude? You know, where should I show or who should I show it around? Around unbelievers. Letter B, turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 16. 1 Chronicles chapter 16. The Bible talks a lot about praise. It talks a lot about thankfulness and gratitude. There is a lot from the beginning of, 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 of the Bible to the end of the Bible. You can find it in almost every single book of the Bible. And in most books, multiple upon multiple times, because God wants to be glorified. God wants to be given thanks for the things that he's done for us. And he has done a lot, a lot for us. There is a lot that God has done for us. If, you, if you're in here today and you're breathing, 
God has given you a blessing. He's given you another day to live. You know, even if you feel like you're going through the hardest of times, every minute you draw breath is a blessing of God. God has given it to you because at any minute, God could take that away from you if you wanted to. You know, it's a blessing of God every second. Letter B, so not letter A, give thanks to God around unbelievers. Letter B, give thanks to God amongst all people. Give thanks to God amongst all people. First Chronicles chapter 16, look at verses 8 and 9. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his, uh, his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Take ye all of his wondrous, or talk ye of all his wondrous works. So not only is he telling us to give thanks to God amongst all the people, but he's very specific here. He says, talk ye of all of his wondrous works. Uh, make known his, his deeds among the people. You know, call upon his name. Hey, thank him for all those things that God is doing for you in your life. You know, don't be afraid to talk to, hey, you know, there's, if there's one person you shouldn't be afraid of talking to about what God has done for your life, it's another Christian. But all too often, even as Christians, we'll talk about the weather, we'll talk about politics, we'll talk about even uh, the latest show that we've watched that has nothing to do with anything spiritual. You know, we'll talk about, you know, uh, what food that we had recently. You know, I'm just talking about stuff that's posted on Facebook if you have Facebook. You know, uh, hey, look at my meal that I'm eating. It's like, I don't care. You know, I, I really don't care what you're eating. You know, I, <laughs> it's like, uh, whatever. You know, but hey, we're so apt to talk about those things, but all too often we shirk or, uh, or turn away from praising God for the things that he's done. Well, what's God doing in your life recently? What has God sh shown you recently? You know, giving God the thanks, talking about everything that God has done in your life, you know, during that day on a daily basis. You know, on a daily basis, giving praise and thanks to God for what he's done. You know, hey, at the very least, you should thank him for the food you get to eat. At the very least, you should thank him for, uh, you know, the heat that you get to enjoy on these cold winter nights that we're about ready to go into. And, you know, all of these things, you know, don't be afraid to talk to other believers about it. Don't be afraid to talk to your coworkers about it. Hey, they may look at you a little funny, but that's okay. You know what? It's, it's okay to be a peculiar people, you know, set aside for God. You know, give thanks to God amongst all the people. Psalms chapter 35, verse 18. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Hey, don't be afraid to talk about God and what he's done for you in your life around groups of people. You know, I've had those times where, uh, you know, I, I was sitting out at a, a dock meeting, a dock shift meeting uh, when I worked at FedEx Freight. And, and uh, there was a couple of guys there that were believers, saved individuals that didn't go to, the, go to First Baptist Church of Hammond. We went to other churches in the area. And, and I had a guy one time ask me, he goes, hey, he goes, um, he goes, do you, are you, he goes, do you teach Sunday school, Chad? And I said, yeah, I teach Sunday school. He goes, what age group? We started getting into a conversation. He would say that he taught Sunday, Sunday school. And, you know, we start conversing. And, and, of course, there's probably about 20, 30 people standing around this dock shack waiting to clock in. And we're having a conversation. No one's talking except for us. And I didn't really realize it until afterwards. But we're having a conversation. And, and uh, he's talking about what he's teaching his kids in Sunday school. And I was talking about, what I, you know, what, what we were teaching uh, the kids there in the Sunday school class I was a part of. And, you know, we get into this conversation. We just get off topic of, of praising God for the things that God's allowing us to do. He goes, man, it, isn't it great that God gives us the opportunity to, to teach and, and talk about the things of God. Everybody around us is, is hearing all this and just giving thanks to God for the areas we're able to serve in. You know, don't be afraid to have conversations. Hey, it may be you're planting some seeds for some people that may not be believers that say, you know what? I want some of that in my life. You know, I, you know, I, you know what is it that they have that I don't? Why is it that they're happy and I'm, I'm not? You know, everything that I'm going after. You know, there are individuals that have had testimony of, of just watching other Christians and seeing how they react to the things of God that they actually believe in, that have turned people to Christ because of that. Don't be afraid to talk about those things that God has done in your life and thank Him for, praise Him amongst the people. Uh, turn to Psalms chapter 150, letter C under number one. Letter C under number one. We're going to have to move quickly here. I always have so much content. You know, I always have so many things that God gives me for certain topics. And, you know, it's all important because especially when it comes to thankfulness, God wants us to be thankful. But where, where should I be, uh, should I show or give gratitude? You know, we should show gratitude amongst the unbelievers uh, to God. You know, uh, praising God. We, we should give thanks to God amongst all people. Let her see. Praise God in his sanctuary. 
Praise God in His sanctuary. Psalms chapter 150, verse number 1. A praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Hey, if there's one place that we should be able to thank and praise God, it should be God's house. It should be God's house. And you shouldn't be afraid to say amen in God's house. You know, I know it's, hey, folks, I grew up in contemporary Christianity all the way up until seventh grade. I've seen both sides of the fence. You know, I've seen, the, I've been a part of those worship services where people are, you know, swaying back and forth. Hey, it's, it, I understand there's a certain amount of acceptableness in a service to what you can and can't do in a service or should and shouldn't do in a service, you know, where it gets out of hand. And the, some of those services got way out of hand. But you should not be afraid to say amen. You shouldn't be afraid to raise your hand giving thanks to God for what, you know, in agreement to that or, or praising God for those things. You know, it, 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 we get so rigid in, in our beliefs. It's so, you know, uh, uh, stiff-necked to giving praise to God because we think, oh, I'm going contemporary. You know, hey, folks, you know, there's something that they got that we don't that we could use a little bit of. You know, and that's giving praise to God in, the, in his sanctuary. Giving praise to God in his church. You know, that's part of the reason why we're having a Thanksgiving service on Thursday. Hey, I believe everything should be done decently and in order, folks. You know, and most of the time those services are not done decently and in order. They're all chaotic. You know, that's not what God's talking about when it comes to giving praise and thanks to him. They should be decently and in order. And on Tuesday when we have our Thanksgiving service, that's the way it's going to be. We give an opportunity for those to, you know, give praise and thanks to God here at church. Say, hey, this is what God has done in my life this, this year, and I want to praise God for it. You know, that, that's an opportunity for us to give praise and thanks to God. If we don't do it here, we're not going to do it anywhere else most of the time. Most of the time, if there's one place you should feel comfortable praising God, it should be the house of God. You know, if you feel uncomfortable giving praise to God in his house, you know, maybe you should ask God to soften your heart a little bit. To maybe, hey, may, you know, I, I got to, I, folks, hear me out here. I, I'm, I'm beating myself up on this too. You know, because even as a kid, when I, I grew up in contemporary Christianity, and, you know, I, I started going to a independent, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist church where they taught the Bible right, and I'd hear people around me saying amen, and I had a guy one time say, why aren't you saying amen? I'm just, it's weird. It's awkward. You know, I'm like, I don't, I don't, you know, I just can't, it's not part of my makeup. You know, I find myself more often than not, saying amen, you know, when it comes to the things that I agree with and giving praise to God on his truth that he's given. You know, don't be afraid to praise God in, in his sanctuary. Hey, one of the best ways to show thankfulness is by using your mouth when it comes to singing. You know, what, think about the words in these, these songs that we sing and singing out that praise to God and being thankful in your heart that we have a church that you come to that, that, that is able to have the Bible and to have a, a Savior that we serve that is a, li a living God. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. You know, that, that, you know as you sing those songs and you think about it, it's giving praise and thankfulness to God. You know, don't be afraid. Hey, you know, it should be that the people that are sitting in the front, the people in the back can hear you singing from the back. And the people in the back, you can hear the, them singing from the front. You know, hey, it doesn't, God doesn't say that you have to have a great singing voice. He just says, use it. You know, <laughs> I love how, and I've used this often enough because I think it's, to me, it's, it's comical because I love Pastor Sully and Debbie saying, you know, I love that song on a hill far away. You know, singing, or singing on, you know, some people just want to see, hear me sing on a hill far, far away. He goes, yeah, I don't have the greatest singing voice. He goes, well, bless God, I use it. And he was right about that. He goes, you never hear me sing a special. He goes, but we could hear him singing up on the platform. You know, I love being able to hear it. What's that? It was special. Yeah, it was special, that's for sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, hey, you know, God, God's given you a voice. One of the best ways of showing thankfulness is by using it. Using it in a way and by using it in his sanctuary. Number one, where should I show or give gratitude? You should show it around uh, unbelievers, those that don't believe, amongst all people. Praising God in his sanctuary. Number two, when should I show or give gratitude? When should I show or give gratitude? Turn to Psalms chapter 30. Psalms chapter 30. A couple different subpoints under number two. Psalms chapter 30, look at verse number 12. When should I show or give gratitude? Letter A, give thanks to God forever. Give thanks to God forever. You know, it, never, it should never end. You should never, never stop. You should never cease giving thanks to God. 
Give thanks to God forever. Psalms chapter 30, verse number 12. To the end that my, uh, to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. God wants us to thank him. From the time that you learn to use your voice, you should thank God. You know, one of the, one of the first things that we try to teach, you know, our, our son is to, to be thankful, to give thanks. You know, I love it. I love it. I love it. There's no greater joy in my life as a parent when we sit down for a meal that my son says, I want to pray, instead of having to ask him, well, oh, can, can you pray this time? Oh, do I have to? You know, no, but to, to have a, a, you know, a child say, you know, I want to pray. Yeah, by all means, I'm not going to tell you you can't. Go for it. You know, that some of the prayers get really long, and you're thinking, man, my food's going to be cold before he's done. You know, but, uh, you know, at the very least, I love the fact that his heart is in it and wanting to thank God for those things that he has done for us. And, you know, I, I, I uh, often, one of the things I'm trying to get him to do is to pray on his own. But as a, during the services, if you're in our evening services or even on a Wednesday night, Zane will come up to the front and he won't, he won't want to pray by himself. You know, he'll want me to go pray with him. Of course, I'll go down and pray with him. And, of course, I tell him, okay, it's your turn. Daddy prayed. Now it's your turn to pray. And, you know, and he'll pray. And to hear the very first words that come out of his mouth, more often than not, are, Lord, thank you. And he goes on to whatever he's thanking God for. And then he'll say, well, now we're asking, you know, asking to pray for so-and-so and pray for this and pray for that. And, of course, I love hearing him pray for, you know, his little friends that he plays with. And, you know, all, all of that is, is entitled that, 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 that opportunity to cultivate an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of gratitude starting young. But give thanks to God forever from the beginning to the end. You know, uh, Psalms chapter 79, verse 13. So we, thy people and sheep of thy pasture, will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations, to all generations. You know, one of the things I love about this verse is not just the fact that it, it talks about praising God forever, but it's for generation to generation. Have you ever had things that you've thanked God for that happened in a past generation? You know, one of the things that I have an opportunity for in my family is I'm not a first generation Christian. I'm not even a second generation Christian. I'm not even a third or fourth generation Christian when it comes to both sides of my family. You know, generations, you know, that's something to be thankful for. I'm thankful that I have been brought up or God has put me into a family where salvation has, has been, uh, been passed down, if you will. The word of God has been passed down, if you will, from generation to generation to give an opportunity for my loved ones, my predecessors, if you will, my family, uh, up to now, being able to, as a parent, pass it down to my son. You know, I was reminded of this recently. We went to the Teen Jubilee yesterday, and my son at lunchtime goes, Dad, where, where are we going? And I go, we're going to the Teen Ju Jubilee. I go, you remember the Teen Jubilee? And he goes, he goes uh, and I asked him, I go, do you remember, you know, uh, back in April what you did? You know, you know I tried, tried to make sure I didn't put words in his mouth. I said, yo, the Teen Jubilee. And he goes, oh, yeah. He goes, that's where I asked Jesus to, to, to save me. And I, and I didn't have to provoke it or anything like that. To me, that was just, again, I'm like, man, he got it. You know, it was just another indication. God, I didn't tell him where he got saved. He would remember where he got saved at. You know, and, you know, that to me, it meant a big deal. Uh, uh, and later on, you know, thanking God for the fact that, hey, we have opportunities like that to pass down generation to generation. If you're in here today and you say, you know what, I'm the first one in my family to get saved. That's not a bad thing. You should thank God for it. You should thank God for it, but you should take it upon yourself and say, you know what, I need to praise God in my life forever so that my kids are able to have it as well, so that my kids are able to, to take this attitude of gratitude into their kids and then their grandkids and their great-grandkids and forever and ever. Give thanks to God forever. Let her be, for the sake of time, just write these notes down. Psalms chapter 119, verse 62. Give thanks to God late at night. These were verses that I found in Bible study, but there's a, an opportunity to give thanks to God late at night. Psalms chapter 119, verse 62. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. Now, for me, it's not rising at midnight. It's before I go to bed because it's usually about the time when I go to bed. You know, but if you're an individual, have you ever had those times where you haven't been able to sleep? Your mind just won't shut down? You know, you're just, man, I just, I just, whatever case may be, you're, you're thinking about what you got to do tomorrow. You may be even worrying about some things. Hey, let's be honest, folks. We all do it. You know, have you ever taken the time to say, you know what? Maybe God just wants me to go talk to him. 
Maybe God just wants me to spend some time with him. You know, I, I, recently I had to do that. I think it was probably about a month ago, and my wife was dead out. You know, she wouldn't remember this, but she was dead asleep, and I was just tossing and turning, and, you know, I just like, you know what? I, I just, for whatever reason, God impressed upon my heart, and I don't do this often enough. I need to do it more. You know, I took, it was kind of cold, so I took my blanket in with me into the living room, into the front living room, and, and I just knelt down by my, uh, my, my armchair and just started praying to God for about 10, 15 minutes, talking to God, thanking him for the things that he's done, and, and praying for individuals in our church, and, and just all the way around, just, just talking to him. I got up from there, went right back to bed, and I can tell you right now, within two minutes of going back to bed, out, out like a light. You know, I think sometimes God just wants us to go and, 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 and give him the, the praise and, and thankfulness and, and, and talk to him a little bit. You know, hey, midnight's not a bad hour, folks. <laughs> you know, some people are like, it is for me. I got, I've got to get up at what, 3, 3, 4 a.m., Mr. Gallano. <laughs> you know, that's, that's early. I understand. You know, but there are times where it is necessary to take some time and say, you know what? This is the time when it's quietest. This is the time when there is no distractions. Hey, my wife was sleeping, my son's sleeping, the dog was even sleeping, you know, she didn't even bother to wake up, you know, she's like, I'm, I'm, I don't care what you're doing, I'm staying right where I'm at, you know, but uh, take the time to, to pray, give thanks to God late at night, you know, you can pray to him, you can give thanks to him at any portion of the day, you know, one of the things I love to do on occasion, especially during the summertime, is to go out, we talked about this in our Sunday school class today, we're going over creation, but going, being able to go outside late at night and look up at the stars and thank God for all of his creation, the things that he's done for us. You know, you can't really do that during the daytime, folks. You don't really see stars. You know, late at night, being able to sit out there where it's nice and cool, but not too cool, not like this cool. You know, some people are like, oh, this is cool to me. You know, not to me. You know, I'm talking like 70 degrees at night, 60 degrees at night, cool. You know, <laughs> you know some people are like, it's still hot. Uh, you know, it's out, in, out in the summertime, looking up at the stars and thanking God for them. Give thanks to God late at night. When should I show or give gratitude? Give thanks to God forever. Give thanks to God late at night. Number three, why should I show or give thanks? You know, why, preacher, why should I show or give thanks? Well, give me a reason. I can give you lots of reasons, and I'm going to give you a few this morning. Uh, letter A under this, give thanks to God for his attributes. Give thanks to God for his attributes. Again, we talked about this a little bit in Sunday school this morning. We talked about the attribute of God's power shown through his creation, the attribute of God's beauty thrown through, uh, shown through his creation. I wrote down a few different things, you know, uh, here that we could give thanks to God for when it comes to uh, his attributes. Uh, letter, uh, sub point number one under letter A under point number three. You know, so <laughs> can you see how this gets, you know, really into it? You know, when it comes down to Bible studies, you know, it can happen like that. But give thanks to God for his attributes. I wrote down this attribute, his mercy. When was the last time we thanked God for him being merciful? You realize that God could, could at any time, you know, because of our sinful nature, because of our sinfulness, remove us from earth? He could say, you know what, I'm done. I'm not, you know, I've given you plenty of chances, but because of his mercies, you know, we're not consumed. You know, I, because of his mercy, you know, his son died on the cross for our sins so that we'd have an opportunity to go to heaven. You know, when was the last time you thanked God for his mercy? First, Corinthians, or First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34, the Bible says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. When was the last time you thanked him for his mercy? You know, when you had didn't get what you deserved. You know, that's what mercy is. Mercy is, uh, is, is unmerited favor. You know, uh, along those lines, grace and mercy go hand in hand. You know, unmerited, you know, you didn't deserve to have mercy given to you. None of us did. But God gave it to us. When was the last time you thanked him for his mercy? When was the last time you thanked God for his holiness? For his holiness. Uh, Psalms chapter 30, verse 4. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Aren't you glad that God is holy, that he's perfect, that he is complete, that there is nothing there that would cause him to, uh, to, to be imperfect like we are? You know, I know the world likes to, the world's got their Bible critics that would say, well, it, you know, it, it, God can't be holy because, you know, and they'll give you all these different reasons to try to biblically explain it. You know, I'm sorry, folks, but we serve a holy God. He is perfect. He's the one that created us. He has every right to do what he wants to do because he is holy. He is just. You know, that goes along with that. Uh, how about uh, when was the last time you prayed uh, uh, and thanked God for, uh, for, his loving, being, for him being loving, kind, and faithful? 
You know, when was the last time you thanked him for being loving, kind, and faithful? Psalms chapter 92, verse 1 and 2, talk about these three things. It's a song uh, for the Sabbath day. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Now, when was the last time you thanked God for loving you? Folks, if there's one thing I don't ever, 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 ever want to forget is that how much God loves me. You know, and that's shown through his son, through that sacrifice on the cross. When was the last time you uh, thank God for the kindnesses that he's shown to you? You know, folks, it, it should be that even the smallest thing you thank God for when it comes to the fact that, you know, again, I've used this before, but we'll go to a grocery store and I don't like having to walk all the way across the parking lot. You know, so every time God gives me a front parking spot or, you know, close to the building, I'll thank God right there. I'm like, praise God. Thank God, you know, he gave us a par parking spot. That's a little, I look at that as being a little kindness. You know, I, um, you know, I went soul winning uh, uh, several years ago, and, and we went soul winning, rain, sleet, shine, or snow, and uh, it was a blizzard. A you know, Tuesday night, churchwide soul winning, and I went with an individual uh, uh, for the first time, and I started praying right before we got out of the car, as I often do. And I said, Lord, you know my heart right now. I don't want to be here. Got to be honest, God, I don't want to be out. I go, it's cold. I go, and I don't want to be cold. I go, it's snowing out, and I don't want to be in the snow. I want to be curled up on a couch. I'm, I'm just pouring out my heart to God, just telling him exactly how I feel. I go, but Lord, we're being obedient to what you've told us to do. We're going. Lord, and we need you to help us to see someone saved. You know, I get done this prayer, and the guy that's sitting next to me, he's a brand new convert. You know, he's uh, never really been sewing a whole lot. He goes, wow. He goes, that was really honest. I go, well, I go, I, I can't be anything but honest. I go, I really, it's really how I feel. You know, so we go, and we start out. We, we get out of the car and, of course, trudge through the snow and trudge through the snow that's coming down. And, and I come up to this alcove of doors and knock on the first door. Person opens the door, start talking to them. God gives us the opportunity to witness to them. The individual gets saved. We walk away from there, go back to the car. We saw someone saved because that was what, you know, we, we want to make sure we get someone saved as, as much, quickly as possible and get out of the elements and get back to the car. And the individual goes, wow, because maybe we should pray like that more often. <laughs> I'm like, well, I go, the only glory I can give is to God for that. I go, oh, more often than not, you know, God gives little kindnesses like that. You know, God blesses obedience. And when God tells us to be thankful, he's going to bless you for being thankful. You know, God gives us, when was the last time you praised God for his faithfulness? Not just his kindnesses and his, and his love, but his faithfulness. You know, God has been faithful to you folks. He hasn't left you by the wayside. God is, is constantly there by you trying to uphold you and, 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 and give you those things that you need. You know, thank him for his faithfulness. What, what about his power? When was the last time you thanked God for his power? You know, I was telling our Sunday school class, I've been to, uh, how many of you have ever been to Niagara Falls before? You've been to Niagara Falls? You know, if you live in this neck of the woods, if you haven't, I'd encourage you. You know, there are, I'm telling you, some of the greatest uh, uh, places I've ever been to show the beauty and majesty and power of God are through places like Niagara Falls. And I remember as a kid, uh, when I was still a young teenager, uh, the first youth conference I ever went to in Hammond, Indiana, where God started working on my heart. Before we went to youth conference, we went up through Canada, up through Vermont, came back down over onto the Canadian side of Niagara Falls. And I remember as a kid standing out there along the, the edge of that, that those falls look, overlooking them. We even took a ferry right up to the falls, you know, uh, made of the mist is what it's called. And, you know, I remember as that and just being completely in awestruck, I mean awestruck, dumbstruck by the power of God, by, by the beauty and majesty of God. You know, when was the last time you thanked God for his power? When was the last time you thanked God for the power he gave you to, uh, to be bold when it comes to, you know, maybe witnessing? You know, folks, I, I have an opportunity to spend some time with family this, this uh, coming Thursday that I have not seen in about three or four years. And uh, this family is heavy, heavy, heavy Roman Catholic in beliefs. And I believe that, you know, my parents have witnessed to them in the past. There's a good indication they probably got saved, but there's going to be probably an opportunity to witness to, to some extended family. You know, there is a part of me, if I'm honest, and I'm just taking my shoes off this morning to help you explain to you that your pastor's human, just like anyone else, that is a little fearful. You know, what are they going to say? You know, what are they going to, you know, are they going to get upset with me, you know, for maybe talking about it? But folks, I would much rather give them the opportunity and then deny it than to stand before God, you know, and, and be held accountable for not saying anything. And that, what that takes is I need God's power on my life. 
When was the last time you thanked God for that power and boldness that he can give to you? You know, when was the last time you, yeah, praise God for his everlasting continuance? Revelation chapter 4, and when those beasts, uh, and, and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. You know, when was the last time you thank God for the fact that he is and always will be? You know, that we don't serve a, a God that, you know, is going to eventually die someday. He, he will always be. He's everlasting. From everlasting to everlasting. When was the last time you thank God for that? You know, I thank God that I serve a living God and not a dead God. You know, I feel so bad for those that serve a dead God. You know, that bow down and worship these idols, these statues, if you will. You know, uh, when was the last time you thanked him for those things, for his attributes? Uh, uh, give thanks to God for his wonderful works. Psalms chapter uh, 75 and verse number 1. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks, for that thy name is near thy wondrous works. Declare. Hey, when was the last time you thanked God for the workings in your life? Maybe the peace he gave you. Maybe the comfort he gave you. Maybe, uh, maybe you, you needed something and you didn't tell anybody else about it and God took care of it. You know, uh, when was the last time you praised him for his wondrous works in your life? You know, give thanks to God for his wondrous works. Uh, give thanks to God for others. Give thanks to God for others. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Hey, folks, when was the last time you thanked God for those that, that God has given to you in your life? When was the last time you thanked God for your mom and dad? When was the last time you thanked God for your children, you parents that have kids? When was the last time you thanked God uh, for your husband's wives or wives, uh, 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 or husbands, you know, husbands, yeah, husbands' wives and wives' husbands, back, back and forth? You know, when was the last time you thanked God for, for maybe uh, your Sunday school teacher that doesn't have to teach a Sunday school class? You know, uh, when was the last time you thanked God for the authority figures that God has put in your life to help put you on the right track? You know, when was the last time you thanked God for others? You know, thank God for those individuals in your life. Hey, folks, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for those people that God put in my life to help guide and direct me to God's will. You know, give thanks to God for others. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2. We give thanks to God always for who? You all, making mention of you in our prayers. When was the last time you thanked God for those individuals that entered in your life? Hey, folks, as a pastor, I thank God on a daily and weekly basis for those individuals that are in leadership at our church that help give me wisdom when I need it. You know, good, godly wisdom. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've confided in, in, uh, in Brother Gallino, he was our head deacon in our deacon boards, and, you know, even going to Brother Seth and others said, hey, you know, I've got this idea, what do you think? And, and they said, well, you know, here's the thing I see that you might not see about. I think, well, I didn't see that. Well, we're not going to do that then. You know, man, I thank God for those individuals that God has put in our lives. You know, I thank God for you folks that come here that choose to be here at Open Bible Baptist Church. You could have chosen to go to any other church, but you chose to come here. You know, when was the last time you thanked God for good Christian friends? You know, when was the last time you, you thanked God for, for those individuals that you could go to that, that, uh, that help uplift your spirit? You know, God has put all of those individuals in your life for a reason. He's put them there. You know, thank God for them. You know, giving thanks to God is a command. Why should I give thanks to God? Giving of thanks to God is commanded. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. God commands us to give thanks. So if it's commanded, if God tells us he wants to and we don't do it, what are we doing? Disobeying. Disobedience is what? It's a sin. God wants us to thank, be thankful. You know, if you're thankful, you know, humbleness goes along those lines. You're not going to be prideful if you're thankful. You know, you're, you're, most of the time pride is going to be put to Put to the side when you're thankful. Hey, Lord, you know, you're the one that's given me these things. I didn't do it. Yeah, Lord, you gave me the job that I have. Lord, thank you so much for that job. Lord, you've, you've given me the family that I have. Lord, you've given me my health that I have. You know, all of those things help push pride out of our life. It puts thankfulness on the one that has given us those things. God commands us to be thankful. Uh, give thanks to God for allowing you to serve him. It goes right into that point. Give thanks to God for allowing you to serve him. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, 
putting me into the ministry. You know, when was the last time you thanked God that uh, he allows you to serve? When was the last time you thanked God that he allows us as individuals to give the gospel to someone else? He chose us to be the means to give the gospel, the greatest message given to mankind, to someone else. When was the last time you thanked him for that? You know, he could have, he could have chosen his creation to do that. He can say, oh, I'll let my creation give the gospel to anybody who wants to hear it. You know, when it comes to the trees, the rocks, the wind, or whatever the case may be. You know, but he chose us. You know, give thanks to God for him allowing you to serve him. You know, that is a big, big deal. God wants to use people. He's chosen to use us. Give thanks to God for his salvation, his eternal life. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-5. through 5, Blessed be the God and, our, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy, hey, this goes back to the attribute of God, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. You know, a form of thanks given to God for what he has given to us is that praise, that blessing that's being given. That word blessed is talking, not just talking about happiness, it's talking about giving thanks. Blessed be God. That's a, a prayer of thankfulness to that, that individual that is being expressed to, and in this case, it's being expressed to God. For what? Salvation. When was the last time you thanked God for the salvation you were given? Well, I got saved 25, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Well, it shouldn't be that you praise God the day that you got saved only. It should be the rest of your life that you praise God for that salvation. Praise God that he gave you the opportunity and me the opportunity to have someone at some point take a Bible, to be able to open it up and see for ourselves what the Bible has to say about going to heaven and say, well, no one showed me. You know, I, but where'd you go to? Did you go to the Bible? You know, God had to reveal it to you somehow, and a good majority of the time, it's through his word. I would say a good 99.9999 all the way down, it's through his word. You know, did you thank God for the fact that he gave you the gospel? Did you thank God for the fact that he gave you salvation? You know, you could be on your way to hell today. For those of you who are saved in here, and if you are in this room today, and you don't know 100% sure without a shadow of a doubt that heaven's your home, you know, it's hard to be thankful for something you haven't already received. You know, you got to receive salvation first in order to be thankful for it. We can get that taken care of today if you're struggling with that this morning. Number four and last, who should show gratitude? Shortest point of the entire morning. You know, only one, letter A. You know, that whole last point was the longest point. Well, number four, who should show gratitude? Everyone, letter A, should show thankfulness to God. Everyone should show thankfulness to God. Psalms chapter 150, verse 6. Let everything that hath breath. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hey, folks, are you breathing in here this morning? God wants you to praise him. If you're taking breaths in here, not of course, I know that. Not, every, check your pulse. You know, you've you got your heartbeat. You know, I know no one's dead in here yet, are they? I haven't, I haven't killed anybody yet through this sermon. You know, but, <laughs> you know I, I may bore you to death sometimes, but uh, you know, hopefully I haven't done that this morning. You know, but if you're breathing this morning, God tells you, he wants you to praise him. It's very, 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 very clear. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. God wants you to praise him. God wants you to praise him. Everyone should thank God. In conclusion this morning, God has done so much for us. He has given us the most precious thing he has, and that is himself. Looking back at this passage in Luke, we, we see this sad example of only one going back, one out of the ten lepers, to give thanks unto God. You know, we, we uh, you know, the example of that one, you know, don't make the mistake of being one of the nine that didn't even bother to come back. Don't make that mistake to be one of the nine that, hey, yeah, they, I'm sure that they were glad that they got healed, but didn't even bother to go back to the one that gave them the healing. You know, God, you know, God want, wants to have that thankfulness given back to him. Make the decision today to cultivate an attitude of gratitude in your life. Let it be such a habit that everywhere you go, you're praising God, you're thanking God. Not only by word, but it really, you really do mean it. In your heart, 
you're showing towards God, Lord, I really, really, really do mean it. If you haven't accepted Christ as Savior yet, let me encourage you to accept that gift that has already been given. You won't regret to make the decision to accept Jesus Christ's sacrifice for you. You will find that you will be, be thankful that you did. I do not believe in my whole heart that when we stand before God someday at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne judgment, that we will have any regrets for accepting that, that gift of eternal life. It is the biggest, biggest, biggest thing in your life that you'll be thankful for at that point. I am so thankful that I took the opportunity to accept that gift. Don't be the one in here this morning that doesn't know that Jesus Christ is your Savior that says, you know what, I'm not ready yet. Because it may be that God sends you into eternity and you stand before him, and at that point you will regret that you didn't accept it. Take the opportunity to accept that gift of eternal life this morning. You'll find it'll make you more thankful. Make sure your salvation is settled today. But for each and every one of us, we can make the decision to develop this attitude of gratitude. Don't let Thanksgiving just be a time of eating, to be a time of, oh yeah, thank you God here and there, and then we go right into Friday, Black Friday, and we just completely forget to be thankful. You know what? We need to be having an attitude of gratitude the rest of our lives, of thankfulness towards God. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that we get to be in this place, Lord. And I know I always, I always, always, always want to remind myself of that. Lord, we live in a country, Lord, where we have the opportunity to come to this church, Lord, without fear of being persecuted, Lord, without fear of maybe even being put to death. Lord, thank you so much. Lord, thank you so much for your word that you give to us, Lord, that we were able to open up this morning. Lord, we were able to hear what you want for us in our lives. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to develop this attitude of gratitude towards you. Lord, you deserve it more than anyone else. Lord, you deserve it because you've created us. Lord, you've given us everything that we have. Father, I pray that if there's someone in here this morning that does not know you as their personal Savior, Lord, that they would take that opportunity to just simply swallow the pride, swallow the fear, to walk an aisle, Lord, to ask for the opportunity to see from the Bible what the Bible has to say about going to heaven so that they can make that decision to accept Christ as their Savior, so that they can start to develop this attitude of gratitude for the things that you've done for them. Father, but for each and every one of us, Lord, that has accepted Christ as Savior, Lord, help us to never forget that. Lord, to not just not only forget it, but to be constantly being, giving you the gratitude, the thanks, Lord, that you deserve for it, for everything that you do in our lives. Lord, and we'll give you the praise and glory and honor for how you work in this service, Lord, in this invitation as you see fit. We pray these things in your son's name. Amen. With heads bowed and eyes closed this morning as the pianist plays, however it is God's spoken to you, you can come down to an altar at this time. <laughs>